Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and uh, today we are taking a look at Sketchfab. Sketchfab just became more fabulous and that's the first time I've ever used that word in my life, I think. Probably the last too. Also, if I sound a little weird, I apologize. I'm just getting over a cold. It's why you haven't heard from me the last couple days and again, why I sound a little strange. Uh, so hopefully I can make it through this video without coughing on you, but we should be back to normal video release schedule. So back to Sketchfab. If you've never used it, I really am a big fan of Sketchfab. It's an online repository. You can share and sell models here. So if you just want to share it and you just want to make people aware of your work, you can do so. Uh, if you want to sell it, you can do so. There's a bunch of free stuff on here. You can download it in GLTF format. So you can actually browse any one of these with a full PVR textured workflow directly in your browser. And I find as far as model repositories go, this one is the closest to what you see is what you get. So you download something, load it into your game engine, and more often than not, it looked exactly what, what you saw in your browser. So I've always been a fan of Sketchfab and it just got a bunch of new features that we we're going to look at today. Now the first one, uh, I don't know that it's really that useful for game developers, uh, but it is really cool. What they've enabled is the ability to stream massive 3D models on Sketchfab. Uh, Microsoft had a project like this as well. It's huge data sets. We're talking like 20, 30, 40,000 polygons and up to 16K textures with multiple LOD supports in these. So as you zoom in, you get more detail, uh, but it allows you to kind of go through these giant data sets. And just the fact that these are gigabytes of 3D data, I'm not really sure that there's a use for this for game developers, uh, but it's still interesting. So this one is a joint initiative between Icon and CNRS, a department of the French government, and Sketchfab themselves. You can see here they have a number of um, ones to pre check it out with. Again, this is early access, so expect some more. You come on in here, you load up the 3D data set. It loads pretty fast. It's actually more on the texture LODs that the performance starts to really flag. Uh, but this is on a 970M running in, I think I'm using, uh, this is Firefox right now. Um, and here you see the initial model. You can scroll with the middle wheel. Like so, you're gonna see as you're far out, you're gonna get uh, less details, but you can navigate around wheel, uh, right mouse button to pan, left mouse button to orbit, and you just sort of can navigate around in the world. Now you'll notice on this initial one, the uh, quality isn't really overwhelming because you're using low LOD textures here. And then as you see, as it's coming in, we can actually start reading the signs here. And even they, they're not amazing, so you still can't read what's on this particular sign, for example. But what you can do is jack up the quality from SD all the way to HD, and then it will get better. It will also take longer, uh, but that is basically the idea here. Now the challenge is every single time you move the mouse or change things or reorientate, you're going to get a new LOD. So see there, we're gonna, we're gonna go back to the maximum LODs, but we're looking at 40 million polygons right here. And so their streaming algorithm is doing good work. Uh, they're uh, close in, can kind of use a little bit of work, but it's definitely an interesting project. Again, I don't know that there's a use case there other than, you know, for like virtually exploring large data sets, et cetera, uh, but it's still kind of a cool addition to Sketchfab. Next up, probably the one that is most useful to the majority of my audience is Sketchfab also now has beta support for Blender 2.80. So Blender 2.80 was just released. We now direct, we support direct upload of Blender 2.80 files. Please note that the support is still in beta and it has a number of limitations. Um, so basically you can export directly to Sketchfab from Blender 2.80 in the, the blend format. Uh, we currently support the principal BSDF shader node and its attached textures. So if you start adding weird nodes into your shader graph beyond the principal node, your textures aren't gonna look great. And then ironically, with the last piece of um, news, uh, models with very large images, four to 8K are crashing when being processed. So keep your textures smaller for now. Um, animations could be really complex animations might break and the plugin has not been updated to 2.80 yet. So uh, right now you can actually have to upload your blend file as a file in the browser, whereas eventually you'll be able to upload it directly from Blender itself. But it's nice to see blend support being added to Sketchfab. Next up, we have another thing, um, is Cinema 4D, uh, which I just talked about the other day, and it's got new pricing coming in the next version if you want, check out that video. Uh, but Cinema 4D now have access to the downloadable, free downloadable models for Sketchfab using the Cinema 4D imported plugin. So if you're a Cinema 4D user, you can now download directly from Sketchfab into Cinema 4D using their new plugin. And then final news here is we have Sketchfab Pro members can download their own models. We're pleased to announce a much requested 
request a feature today for our pro and above subscribers, also known as people paying money. The ability to download your own 3D models directly from Sketchfab, Unity, and Unity, Unreal, and Cinema 4D. This is a great way for you to not only use Sketchfab to showcase your models, but to now also use Sketchfab as a backup of sorts. So uh, you can upload up there, and what it would originally do is kind of translate it into its intermediate GLTF format. Now you can actually have it archive your original source document. So exactly as they just said there, if you're using this as a pro, you can you know share and, and demonstrate your work there, but you can also have it available for uh, direct download. So it is a secondary backup system of sorts. So a bunch of new announcements for Sketchfab. If you have never checked out Sketchfab, I highly recommend it. It's a really cool site. Again, there are plugins for a lot of systems out there enabling you to directly get your free assets from Sketchfab into your game or your purchased assets, I believe, for most of the plugins into your uh, game engine or creation content with DCC tool. Um, and these, these improvements are definitely, you know, across the board. Again, I don't really know how this streaming massive 3D models is going to really be useful for, for anybody really, uh, other than, you know, if you've got a huge data set and you want to share it with the world, you can collaborate with Sketchfab to make it available. Uh, but it is fun to play with. So there is that. And sometimes doing things just for fun is reason enough. If you see a use here, um, let me know. Uh, and also let me know what you think of those new features, the new Blender uh, 2.8 file format support or the Cinema 4D support or the ability to download your own files after you've uploaded them so you can use Sketchfab as a backup site of sorts. And also let me know if you've never checked out Sketchfab. Check it out. Let me know what you think. All right, that's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.